forging cyber. Forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and we are back again at Fed Cyber 2014 in Tyson's Corner, Washington, D.C. The end of the show, it's just wrapped up, so I wanted to check in with Matt DeVoe. He is one of the co-founders of Fed Cyber. How are you today? Doing great. Tired, but great. I bet. And more importantly, how did the show go today? I thought the show went fantastic. And we started with a really strong opening, talking about how we changed the game on security awareness and training issues and ended the day with a really great keynote on how do we embrace some of these problems that we have in the security community instead of just talking about them? And then everything in between. It was really def definitely a content-dense day right. uh, that kept people engaged and had a high level of audience participation and right. just had a tremendous dialogue throughout the course of the day. Absolutely. And that's kind of the unique aspect of Fed Cyber that you guys shoot for is the you know audience speaker dialogue. That went well? It, it did, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things we always pride ourselves on is that there are any number of folks in the audience that could actually be on stage because they have the expertise and the experience. Right. So we try and foster that dialogue, having questions. One of the tenets of Fed Cyber is that it's non-attribution. There's no media here. So it really allows people to talk about the issues that their job titles or experience or you know, otherwise might constrain them. Right. And that just creates a really good conversation around what are you know very hard issues. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely seems to. Um, now, you had some really great speakers here today, and we were able to interview a few of them. Tell me, how did you find the speakers? How did you select them? Bob and I sit down at the... Uh, you know, beginning of the planning process and try and decide what do we think are the topics that we need to bring to the community, mm -hmm. right? We really feel like that's our job is what are the issues that this community should be talking about, thinking about, are there ideas that they should be exposed to? And so we go through that process and then once we identify what those ideas are, we start to identify the players that should be the, you know, the participants in the panel or the speakers. We knew that the security awareness and training is a, a huge issue. People always say that training and awareness is one of the core components of information security, mm -hmm. yet we've been doing it the same way for 20 years. Yeah. It's been hit the enter button, next slide, next slide, next slide. Uh, so we brought Masha in to talk about what they're doing at her company, which is really an engaging and gamification and rewarding people and enabling them to participate in the security education process and demonstrating real quantifiable results at the end of that. Uh, so that was fun. Same thing with Internet of Things. You know, we bring in uh, a PhD that's looking at swarming intelligence because we feel like that's going to be a piece of how do you secure the devices that exist where there are too many to count. You have this huge. You have to have this swarm intelligence that's able to go out there and interrogate these devices and look at them and and derive some heuristics. Having uh, you know an academic researcher who's been taking cars apart and taking thermostats apart and understanding you know how are these devices being network enabled and and those core tenets that are going to be essential. And more so kind of asking those questions, given that this is kind of an emerging market of what should we think be thinking about in the security domain about these products? We always talk about how the internet was just an experiment. It was never meant to be deployed. And then we had personal computing and how we kept getting caught by surprise. Well, here's an instance where we've identified the internet of things is coming. IPv6 is coming. What should we be doing? to address the security of those technologies now. Let's not have another conversation in 10 years saying, oh, when the technology caught us by surprise, it's not catching us by surprise. Let's understand and foster a debate around what we should be doing right now. So just a, a tremendous amount of great content around those types of issues. Right. And one thing you guys mentioned at the end was that you were really encouraging participants that were under the age of 40 or even under the age of 30 to come back next year and scholarships for some of them. Tell me, tell me more about that. We did, yeah. So we really have tried with these events to embrace the entirety of the community. And that can be a challenge because it's, in all honesty, it's a community that is overwhelmingly male. Yeah. Uh, so if you'll notice, we had an opening keynote and a closing keynote that were both females with right. valid contributions and really two different generations. One who is just starting and coming in with new ideas and one that has the lessons learned of over 20 years of experience that can guide us in what we need to be doing over the next 20 years. Uh, same thing with veterans. You know, we've We've identified an issue and we talked about workforce issues on a panel today of we have this great skill uh, set of veterans that have s skills from maintaining networks and engaging in cybersecurity related activities coupled with open job recs at places like NSA and Cyber Command and DOD. So we wanted to have a dialogue on how do we better match up 
these transitioning vets into those jobs. So we made a real effort to get transitioning vets into the audience. We gave them free scholarships, just like we did with the, with the women, trying to get them into the audience and participating. And somebody came up at the end of the event and said, here's a community that is not overly engaged. Is That's the community that's under 40 or under 30. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to engage them? And so we issued that as a challenge for next year. We had a lot of talk today about cyber history and understanding the past and how that right. informs the future. Well, the history of cybersecurity was in this room. I mean, you literally covered three decades across every government organization you can imagine, private sector experience, um, multitude of roles. They were here. What are we doing to embrace that next generation and get them exposed to our experience, right. get them exposed to our stories, our histories, so that they can learn from our mistakes, learn from our successes? So we're going to make that a major theme for next year is what do we need to do to embrace the next generation of security experts, mentor them, get them involved in the debate. Excellent. Well, we love what you're doing here at FedCyber, and we thank you so much for having uh, Secure Ninja TV here. It's been an honor. Thank you guys to be, for being here as well. Definitely. And then the other co-founder of FedCyber right here with me is Bob Gorley. How are you today? I'm good. I'm optimistic and happy. Excellent, because the show just wrapped up and everything went well. It did, and I think we highlighted a lot of issues and action plans to address these key issues in the world of cybersecurity. Yes, you guys really did. And one thing that kind of makes your show unique is that there's no media allowed in the presentation area. Tell us more about that, and how did you come to that kind of rule? Well, um, we're really a working group that wants to help create new ideas and concepts and move the community forward. And to do that, we want people to talk freely about what's on their mind, their challenges, their problems, and even their failures. And it's so much easier to do that when there's it's a no media allowed event. We love the media. We really do. And there are parts of it we need to get the message out. But mm -hmm. it's just not the right event for media. Right, right. So you think people are more open and telling and just, just more dialogue because they know that they're kind of what happens in this room stays in this room sort of thing? Absolutely. The Chatham House rules is the way we express it. What happens here stays here. Now, we will be able to release some highlights. And, of course, we inform the community themselves of the overview of what was discussed here. Uh, but it helps people discuss things in a much more free way when there's no media. Yes, definitely. We like that. Um, now, one of the little value adds here at the conference was this book that was given to all of the attendees, The Cyber Threat, and the author here is you. That's right. Tell us about this book. The Cyber Threat was written for the business executive that knows there's a threat but may not know it in enough detail to make business decisions. So these are the people that can make life for the CISO easier if they understand the threat better. So the, th the Cyber Threat reviews who the threat actors are and then how to organize to bring cyber intelligence into your organization and how to act on that cyber intelligence to help mitigate the threat. Definitely. Yeah, I, I um, leafed through it a little bit. I saw that there was a, a lot about the history of cybersecurity and then a lot of the different attacks that have happened and the lessons you can learn from each of the attacks. Right. And so one of the things, unfortunately, we've noticed is we keep relearning history um, and having the same battle, uh, same strategy and tactics defeat us again and again and again. So we do provide enough history in there to help extract some lessons, again, for the business executive so they're more prepared for coming attacks. Right. Now, those that did not attend FedCyber, where can they find this book? Well, the easy way to remember it is thecyberthreat.com. So at thecyberthreat.com. Good domain name. Right. <laughs> So I was able to sit in on a really interesting discussion about the Internet of Things, which is a really hot topic. Tell us about the scale of the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things, as you can imagine, is very large. It's ubiquitous. It's um, on the order of 64 billion connected devices by the year 2020 and about 1 trillion connected sensors uh, by the year 2020. So very large, on the order of over a trillion devices connected to this Internet of Things. The bad news is um, we're starting to identify the fact that it's not going to be secure unless we decide to write in design right now uh, ways to secure the Internet of Things. Um, our whole goal is, all right, let's change the situation before it's too late. Right. Now, I know there's a lot about car hacking and medical device hacking. What are some of the other things in the Internet of Things that should be a concern? Uh, one concern is uh, who owns your data? If you are surrounded as an individual with a thousand sensors and you think that data is for your use and your decisions to help you, um, is it really under your control? Where does that data go? And is it secured and encrypted? Uh, can it be manipulated and shared and exchanged? These are very serious concerns that we're, are going to confront all of us. 
as a community, uh, we need to take a leadership role and help determine ways to mitigate these concerns. Well, your panelists had some really good conversation about that, so that was a, a cool thing to sit in on. Um, where do you see Fed Cyber going maybe next year? What, what sort of changes are you already envisioning? You know, there, um, we like to get together and brainstorm and solicit a lot of input from the community before we give the final answer to that. But generally, we're getting two kinds of input. One kind of input says, let's make it larger. Let's bring in larger groups of people. Let's make it uh, 500, 1,000 people. Then others are taking the stance that let's keep it small, as small as possible. Let's try to limit it to 250 to 300 people uh, so we continue to get this rich dynamic of uh, discussion and interactivity that a small group like this has. I tend to lean towards that answer, but uh, frankly, I'll do whatever the community pulls us towards. Right. Have you ever considered branching out of the federal, federal sector and maybe making more smaller shows all around? Uh, there has been discussion of that. Uh, right now, we're focusing on what we think our niche is, which is helping this sector and this portion of the community in the best way possible. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having us here. It's really been an honor. It's, a great, having you as, it's great having you as a part of the Fed Cyber community. Definitely. And thank you for signing my book. I look forward to reading this. All right. Isn't DC lovely in the fall? Thank you all so much for watching Secure Ninja TV. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can catch all the other interviews we shot here at Fed Cyber. We also travel all over the world shooting interviews at cybersecurity conferences, and we have a lot of really great resources on this YouTube channel, so subscribe. Also, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, check out our Instagram, check out our Google+. We do it all. I'm Alicia Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.